How's it going folks? Welcome back to Florida Homestead. Today we had an awesome opportunity to set up this vertical garden. It's an indoor outdoor vertical garden from Worth and there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can utilize this. There's a lot of different applications for this and it's just really cool. It's really aesthetic. It looks really neat and I'm very excited to get planting in this and to try it out. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you the process that we went through unboxing and setting it up and give you my thoughts on it. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Come on guys. So when you open the box, you're immediately going to be greeted with a dozen of these little planter pots, so to speak, and they come in rows of three. So three uh, times 12 is 36. So there's a total of 36 of these little pots included with this wall garden kit. And the way that they work is they have these little holes inside of them where water, once it hits a certain point, will actually drain down from the top row of pots to the second row of pots, to the third row of pots, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in theory, whether you're using the irrigation tubing in the pump or not, whether you're just watering manually, like with a uh, watering can, you only have to water the top row of pots, and then that water will seep down from row to row to row all the way through. And not only that, but it looks really aesthetic. It has a really cool look as well. It gives you like a wall of vegetables or flowers, if that's what you want it to grow. So it has a really cool and interesting design. Now this kit also comes with these planting sponges and baskets and some clay pebbles as well and it's really neat. So for getting your seedling started, you actually take these planting baskets, you put them in each one of the little pots in the vertical garden and you fill them up with clay pebbles. In the seedling, uh, the planting sponge goes in the middle of those little baskets and you start your seedlings in there. And so that becomes almost the grow medium around those little clay pebbles and when the water comes in, the water reaches the, those little seedling baskets and your little seedlings start inside of those. So I had a really cool idea in my head for how I wanted to utilize this garden. And I have a bunch of extra pallets lying around here on the homestead. I usually use the pallets to hold bales of hay when I go ahead and bring them out to the cattle. So we always have a couple on hand. I decided that I was going to take some outdoor spray paint, go ahead and hit this pallet with the spray paint to kind of give it some protection from the elements. And I was going to use this almost like a mounting board to mount the vertical garden onto, and then I'd have this outdoor garden. So I went ahead, I spray painted the pallet, and I had an extra two by four on hand. I went ahead and cut it really quickly into like some feet so that the stand would stand upright. And I put it together. And this is what I was gonna use as the base, almost like my foundation for putting these planting pots on and assembling the uh, garden. So after a little bit of pre-planning, I went ahead and started drilling the pots themselves into the pallet. And I ran into a little bit of an issue with the spacing. So the way that the pallet itself was spaced, there was like I could drill row one into the pallet, no problem. I could drill row two into the pallet, row, no problem. And then row three was just kind of like floating in space. There was nowhere that I could really drill into. But thankfully, the way that these pots basically connect, they almost snap together in a way. I was able to get the top two rows drilled into the pallet and the bottom two rows drilled into the pallet. And the middle two rows, because there's six rows total, the middle two rows are just kind of like floating in space. But because they fit so neatly and so snugly together, it's actually really secure and those pots aren't going anywhere. So in the end, this design actually ended up working exactly the way that I wanted it to. Well, I managed to get all the rows of the pots in. Now the top level and the second level I screwed right into the pallet. 
the third level and the fourth level are actually just floating there, but the fifth and sixth levels, the bottom two levels, are screwed in as well. So the top is super secured, the bottom is super secured, and the two middle rows are just kind of floating there in space, but I've got them packed in so neatly. They basically like lock into one another. I've got them packed in so neatly, they're not going anywhere. So this plan actually worked out exactly like I had hoped it would. And so it was time to test with all of the pots firmly attached to the pallet and the, the garden really, really coming together. It was time to test the functionality with that drainage. I wanted to see if, you know, the top pots filled with water, how it would go ahead and leak from level to level to level, all the way to the bottom. So I went ahead, I grabbed my wife, Amanda, and I had her showcase just that. And honestly, it works great. There's not really like any splashing or the water going out of bounds, so to speak, which is what I was afraid of. The way that they line up is so perfect. And the water, once the pots fill up at the top, the excess water flows downwards to row number two, and then from two to three, and from three to four, and so on. So really all you have to do is water that very first row of pots, and then all your rows are gonna get watered and pretty uniformly as well. And folks, there you have it. We've got the garden right here. I'm really, really, really happy that it turned out exactly the way that I had hoped it was going to turn out. Now, we're going to be using this thing outside. And what I'd like to see, if you guys can leave in the comments, what should we plant in this thing? Because we're going to plant in this and we're going to grow our own vegetables inside this thing. I was thinking microgreens, but I'm really curious to hear what your guys' suggestions are, so let me know. But I'm going to document all of that, and we're going to see just how that turns out with growing some vegetables inside this thing. The last thing that I want to mention is keep in mind, we're going to be using this outside, but this is both an indoor slash outdoor garden. So if you wanted to use this indoors, you could actually mount it to your wall, whether that's in your kitchen, in the living room, in the bedroom, and it becomes almost like a decorative piece. It's both functional and decorative, um, but you can grow vegetables inside. And keep in mind, that's where those little drainage plugs come into play. So as water enters the top with that irrigation tubing and with that pump, as water enters the top, it's going to drip all the way down to the bottom and it won't spill out all over your floor because you've got those stoppage plugs in there. So that's if you wanted to use it indoors, you can do it with that pump and with that tubing. But we're going to be using this outside and like I said, I'm thinking microgreens, but no matter what, we're going to try this thing out. I'm going to be documenting that in a future video um, and I'd love to hear your suggestions as to what we should grow in this thing. Guys, this is awesome. There's going to be links below the video where you can check this out. Thank you to Worth for giving us an opportunity to try this out. And we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll grow some cool stuff in this. Everybody, God bless you. Thank you so much for watching the video. And until next time, it's Justin with Florida Homestead. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye, you guys. I think we should grow radishes in there. You think we should grow radishes in there? Yeah.